All right, welcome to Fabric Fridays, where we're going to be doing a series of executive interviews, and we're kicking it off with Arun Ulag. Arun, welcome. How the heck are you doing, buddy? I'm super excited to be here, Chris. Uh, you know, I absolutely love your show. Thank you so much for everything you're doing for the fabric community. Super excited to meet your audience here. So thank you for having me. Oh man, you are uh, you are one of the the my favorite people at Microsoft. I'm so excited about the stuff that you're doing with uh, Fabric and that you've been you know way back in the days with, with Power BI. Um, mm -hmm. I'm excited to ask you some kind of questions around that. But before we do that, I understand congratulations are in order. Did you just get a promotion? Uh, I did. It's no big deal, but I did. Thank you for that. <laughs> Oh, come on now. You're now the president of Azure Data. That's a big deal, right? <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> well, let, let's let's dive into some questions. All right. So Fabric re represents one of Microsoft's most ambitious unifications in data. What was the moment or insight that convinced you that this was the right strategic move? And how did you build alignment across so many different teams in order to make this happen? You know, it was interesting, uh, Chris, like I've been running Power BI a long time and it was, I think, 2021 uh, when, uh, you know, uh, the Microsoft leadership said, please run uh, analytics, uh, you know, end-to-end -end for Microsoft. And the first, uh, I would say, two months for me was just meeting with customers. I met with literally, I don't know, maybe 100 customers in different forums, mostly one-on-ones, but maybe small group meetings, just to understand what their life was like. And oh, what jumped out to me uh, right away was just the complexity that they were inundated by. Literally, you know, hundreds of products and solutions in the data and AI space. And if you're in our customer shoes, it's really hard to figure out which products to use, which ones work together, how are they priced and licensed, and how do you put them together to create business value? So the thing that we really thought about was like, hey, we went back 30 years right? and we said, hey, uh, you know, when we had Microsoft Word competing with WordPerfect, we had Excel mm. competing with Lotus 1, 2, 3. And then Microsoft realized the opportunity was not Word or PowerPoint or Excel. The opportunity was to improve productivity for business users. Right? And that's when we introduced Office. Right. And Office basically said, hey, it's, uh, each of these individual products are great, but they're even better when they work together. And we said, why can't the same approach apply to data? Right. And so that was the, uh, and it really played to our advantages as well, because Microsoft has spent more than a decade, as you well know, investing in a comprehensive data and AI stack. But there was too much burden we imposed on customers to put our own pieces together, let alone everybody else's, right? And so, uh, so we said, hey, uh, in the future, especially as AI was becoming more and more important, we said, hey, that it's not going to be about my database is better than your database, or my lake house is better than your lake house, or my data warehouse is better than your data warehouse. It's really about how we bring everything together to create business value. And uh, that, you know, so that's, that's when we thought about uh, Fabric. Um, and, you know, it was interesting, like, so we, we had, uh, we had this inside, we had a whole bunch of wallows, you know, there were many, uh, you know, uh, positions in favor and against, and, you know, I, I, I forget, but it was like September 10th. I said, we're going to spend the whole day and we're going to leave that day with a decision one way or the other. <laughs> right. Mm. And so, uh, so that, so that's what we did. We decided to go with fabric and, um, you know, it was called project Trident those days, if, uh, of course, if you remember. <sighs> And, um, you know, a month later, Amir had an idea uh, and I was excited by his idea and I was frustrated by his idea. And right? his idea was like this one piece missing, which is the data lake. And he came up with mm. one. Lake, right? and oh, he, I love that. And I was like, oh, my God, I wish Amir had thought of this three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it was such a good idea that we basically said, let's make sure that we build one lake as well. So that's kind of how we thought about Fabric, you know. Um, really, the insight was the complexity that customers were under, the fact that, uh, you know, the differentiation in the future was, uh, in addition to being fantastic databases or data warehouses or lake houses, we really needed to make sure the end-to-end -end, uh, platform just worked. And, and then with one lake as the one drive for data, um, that was uh, a late addition by a couple of months. Uh, I love that story, and I love the way Fabric does that, because you're exactly right. Like, when you're solving a data problem, you you potentially need any of these tools. You need them integrated. You need them to work together. I I, I love the Fabric story. 
I guess the big thing uh, around this I, I'm trying to understand is, I mean, Microsoft, you're not a small company, right? There's, it wasn't like you had to convince four people to make this decision. How, how did you actually get that, that room of people together? And who, who, like, can you tell us more about like, how many people did you have in the room? How did you get the buy-in from, from them that this was a, a great direction to go? I think, um, uh, first of all, it was really hard, Chris, to be very transparent. Right. Right. Um, uh, But we really started from the customer and worked backwards. I think Mm. all the customer conversation, one of the things that has been a superpower for Azure Data uh, is really our intense focus on customers. You know, just making sure that we remind ourselves every hour of every day that we are here to serve them, you know. And, uh, you know, so I think the, uh, the, the customers told us loudly and clearly that, you know, they you know, one of my favorite quotes, and you've heard me say this, is, uh, you know, I'm the chief information officer. I don't want to be the chief integration officer, right? Sure. And um, so that message came across loud and clear. Uh, the second is really, you know, uh, making sure that we wallowed in that shared context. You know? mm-hmm. um, and uh, that wallow time made made a big difference. And the third is just mm-hmm. being able to say, hey, um, we have to make a decision at some point, right? And we may not all agree, right? Um, because I don't think everybody agreed, right? But uh, and uh, but uh, we did make a decision, and uh, you know I have just enormous respect for my team because even for the folks that were all in, they were all in from day zero. But for the folks that weren't all in, they were willing to disagree and commit, right? And so that made a giant difference. Uh, and then we had an opportunity to meet, um, uh, you know, uh, my boss Scott Guthrie, uh, Satya, and the SLT. Uh, I think somewhere in November. And, uh, you know, we made this pitch and uh, I just have, um, you know, just enormous respect for how Microsoft operates because it wasn't a top down thing. It wasn't that, you know, we were told to go do this, um, sure. but, um, you know, there was a lot of curiosity. There was a lot of um, interest in understanding what Microsoft was doing well, what we were not doing well, what the competition was doing, what customers were asking for. And then the appetite to make big bets, because like, look, mm. what are we going to do? We're going to take five major products, you know, across data, data factory, analytics, great databases, real time business intelligence and unify them. Right? They're going to move from platform as a service to software as a service. They're going to introduce one lake as a, a, a shared data lake. Uh, with one lake, we're going to embrace open source data formats for everything in Fabric. Right. We're going to unify the business model, um, you know, which had never been done in the industry. And I think even today, Fabric is the only product in the industry that unifies the business model, giving customers one thing to buy. So, you know, uh, we pitched all of this and uh, it was just uh, heartwarming to see the appetite in the Microsoft SLT to say, yes, let's shoot for a giant leap forward and then confidence in the team. Uh, to be able to pull it off. So I, I, I do think that uh, we had a lot of support uh, across the company, but everything started with the customer. And that's what we've always intensely focused on. It's like, we're here to make their lives better. I, I absolutely love that, Arun. And I, honestly, I, I think that goes back to like some of our first interactions. And yep. uh, that, that goes back to, you know, with Power BI and Power BI's rise, or, or, you know, right? Like you help guide Power BI from a niche tool to a global analytics platform. What lessons from that journey most influenced how you approach building and scaling fabric, both technically and culturally? Um, You know, uh, it it was a fantastic journey and we've got a very, very strong team in fabric and we've got had always had a very strong team in Power BI. So, you know, um, so lots of people deserve lots of credit for making Power BI the huge success that it became. you know, I would say, if, uh, you know, if I were to net it out, I would say maybe three things, uh, Chris, okay, you know, okay. um, the first is really uh, winning developer love. Right? Mm. Uh, one of the things that Power BI people wake, woke up every single day thinking about is like, have we, how much have we grown usage and how much have we driven satisfaction? The two numbers that matter for any Power BI person is usage and satisfaction, right? Yep. Um, more uh, monthly active users and NPS, which is we measure satisfaction daily. And so the team was intensely focused on winning developer love, right? And, uh, uh, you know, and that translated into a whole non- bunch of things. It meant that, hey, uh, we invested in ideas.powerbi.com, which now is ideas.fabric.com. Uh, but any developer can go tell us what ideas they want us to go build. Anybody can vote on each other's ideas. And 
in every planning cycle, which for us is every six months, there's a lot of pride in the team to take the top voted mm -hmm. ideas and make sure that they make it into a product plans and we ship those capabilities. Because this tells our developers, our customers, is that we deeply care about you and what you want this product to become. And so when you do that, developers become community members. Community mm -hmm. members fans, right? So one of the things you know I love about Power BI is even today you go into YouTube, you go into LinkedIn, you go into uh, you know Twitter, <clears throat> and you search for Power BI. It's a large and passionate community of millions of developers, millions of users that love the product, right? And it came from the engineering team really focusing on what the developers care about. You know, I go into customer meetings and I can show them, like a meeting with a customer, I can show them which ideas came from their developers. Right? that we have shipped <laughs> and it blows them away because even startups can't do that. Right? Yeah. Microsoft, the large organization, being able to tell um, you know, the large customer that, hey, your developers asked us to go build this. You did not know about it, but we built it, we shipped it, you know, uh, we, we met their requirements. So the intense focus on developer love. Um, the second thing I would think about is really thinking strategically about the business model. Right? And mm -hmm. one of the things that Microsoft does well is we democratize things, we collapse costs, we make things easy to use, we drive costs down. Um, you saw we did that with SQL, right? You know, right. A fraction of the price of Oracle when it came out, it's still a fraction of the price of Oracle, you know, even though we are the clear leader. Um, when Power BI came out, one of the decisions that the team deserves credit for, not me, I was not involved at that point, but uh, they made the Power BI desktop free. Right? which mm -hmm. was a technical thing to do because, you know, Tableau, I think it was charging more than $1,000 for Tableau desktop, right? And here was Power BI desktop completely free, uh, which meant that people could download the product, um, use it, and then when they found things that they didn't like, could go to ideas and tell us what they wanted us to go build, right? So it gave us that positive developer feedback loop. Um, and it got everybody to use Power BI Desktop by just downloading the product. And it wasn't just Power BI Desktop, it was Power Query, so you could connect to data sources. It included um, the semantic modeling capabilities, right? So you could build your model, uh, and it was really fast. And guess what? We shipped a new release of Power BI Desktop every single month, right? You know? And if you're a Power BI developer, it feels like Christmas is coming every month because the team is listening, they're learning, they're shipping. So making Power BI Desktop free, I think, was a massive move. Uh, the second thing is just pricing Power BI at 10 bucks per user per month, you know, uh, it was like, hey, this is affordable. Like this, people can go buy this thing. Uh, and so they would use Power BI desktop to learn the product. And then they would use, uh, you know, uh, uh, they would pay for the license once they decided that there was enough value here, right? So I do think that the business model designed to democratize access, mm -hmm. make things easy, make things inexpensive, really drove our adoption. And the third thing really is making things easy. And you know, we used to call this the, we, I think we still call it that. We said it's PowerPoint for data, right? Yep. Uh, and um, the idea there is like, hey, can we make BI as simple to use as Office? You know, so mm -hmm. we borrowed a lot of ideas. Like if you look at, um, you know, Power BI Desktop, the reports, they're designed to mimic Power BI, you know, PowerPoint slides. If you look at um, you know, how visuals are laid out and you move the visuals around those little grid lines up here, just like they do in PowerPoint. Uh, if you look at Power Query, it was first shipped in Excel. If you look at how conditional formatting works in Power BI, it works like Excel. So we did a lot of things to make Power BI feel very familiar. And that we refer to as PowerPoint for data, and that made things easy. So I would say, hey, these three things, focusing on developer love, creating a simple, inexpensive business model, and then really making the product easy to use uh, were some of the things that uh, really made Power BI very successful. I, I think that's awesome. And that, that brings up a, a good like kind of follow up question, how do you balance innovation alongside enterprise trust? Yeah, it, this is an important one. And, um, you know, it again comes from customers. So one of the things that we learned, Chris, is that while it's great to listen to ideas uh, that gives us feedback from millions of developers, large enterprise customers often have different needs. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, so we, uh, you know, you know, Mark Rigera, right? So he's yeah. uh, uh, Mark Regera leads the now the Fabric Customer Advisory Team, previously the Power BI Customer Advisory Team. But we've uh, really built out a program called Enterprise Voice, where the top couple of hundred of our enterprise customers uh, actively are in the tent with us, you know, mm. under strict NDA, but uh, two or three people from each customer. But these are carefully selected people that deeply care about our product, that have a lot of perspective, 
And everything that we work on, Chris, we show them early designs, you know, mm -hmm. uh, where like things that are ship in six months, 12 months, 18 months, we show them early designs and they tell us, you know, uh, what they like, what they don't like, how we should evolve it. So we get enterprise feedback continuously through the product. Uh, in fact, Enterprise Voice has been running for, I think, almost 10 years. And every week there's a session. So if you're a product manager in, in uh, Fabric um, working on something, all you have to do is ask for a slot. Right. Uh, and, you, you know, you're in front of, uh, you know, a couple of hundred uh, individuals from our customers who deeply care about that particular area uh, and can give you real feedback. So we've learned a lot from enterprise customers. What we've also tried to do is balance the need of IT and business. Okay. Mm. Now, um, it's too easy to swing too much in one direction or the other. Right. Sure. Um, as, uh, you know, IT needs a whole bunch of things. They need security, they need governance, they need network security, they need encryption, they need good permissions management, you know, a whole bunch of things that we've continuously learned and improved and, you know, really tried to nail. Um, but business also needs to move forward quickly, right? Uh, you know, if you swing too much in the uh, favor of IT, then IT just locks everything down and business can't move, right? If you swing too far towards business, then what happens is that IT has no control whatsoever. So we've always tried in Fabric and Power BI to balance between IT and business. And if you go up a, an organization, a customer's organization, if you go to the CXO level, that's exactly what they want, right? Yep. Because you know the whole purpose of IT is to help business move forward quickly. So we've always struck that balance. So we've always tried to make sure. And one of the things that uh, we talk about is discipline at the core, right? Mm -hmm. Provided by IT with strong data products, with a strong foundation, but flexibility at the edge where business can meet many of their own needs through no code, low code experiences to extend what IT provides so that they can move forward quickly. And in Fabric and in Power BI, we've always tried to make sure that we do both discipline at the core and flexibility at the edge. Uh, uh, Arun, I absolutely love that. And I have to thank you for your partnership on balancing those controls over the years. I know we've had many a conversation in that area. So I, I thank you very much. And uh, just to be respectful of your time, I've got one last question for you, Arun. And uh, so if the data gods smile upon Microsoft Fabric and granted you one wish for the future, what would that wish be and why? You know, for me, Chris, it'll be like just democratizing access to data, like to, to, to the data estate. The data estate is too complex and too expensive. You know, um, I think Satya announced in our last earnings call that we have 28,000 customers on Fabric, which is massive. You know, it's uh, uh, for a product that's two years since GA, uh, it's the fastest growing data platform on the planet, period. However, it's a drop in the bucket compared to the 420,000 organizations that use Power BI every single month. Uh, and that's because Power BI has really done a really good job democratizing access to, uh, you know, business intelligence. So I'd love to do the same thing for the entire data stack, drive the cost down, democratize access so that hundreds of thousands of customers are able to get, uh, you know, the same benefits, uh, but across the entire data stack. So that would be my wish of the data gods. <laughs> Gosh, I, well, if I had the power, that is exactly what I, I, I'm working towards too, Arun. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for all of the work you do. Please, please share with you know the developers and the PMs how much we in the community really love the work that you guys are doing. It is a delight to work with Fabric every day, and I, I just I, I want to thank you so much for for everything, sir. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for having me, and thank you so much for your partnership. You're leaning into Fabric. You're leading into Power BI. You have stayed with us for a long, long time. And thank you so much to the community that uh, is that we all get to work to work with together. Awesome. Thank you, Arun, and thank you for joining us today. You have the best day ever. Peace. <laughs>